The first thing you'll do in Photoshop is either open a file or create a new file. So let's go over how to do both. When you launch the latest version of Photoshop CC, you may see a start screen that looks something like this. If you wanted to open an existing image, you could go to the Open button on the Start screen and click, or if you wanted to create a new image from scratch, you could use the New button on the Start screen. But there's another way to get to these same commands from anywhere in Photoshop. So even if your Start screen isn't showing, you can always go up to the File menu at the top of Photoshop and choose New or Open from there. Let's go ahead and choose Open from the File menu to open some existing image files into Photoshop. That will launch your Mac Finder or your Windows File Explorer, where you'll navigate through your file system to an image file and select it. You could select one of the practice files that come with this tutorial, as I'm doing, or you can select an image of your own. If you want to open more than one image at a time, hold the Command key on a Mac or the Control key on Windows and select another image file. Then click the Open button. Both selected images open into Photoshop's editing workspace, which is called the Document Window. At the top of the document window, there is a tab for each open image, and the tab tells you the name of the image. If you want to see another open image, just click its tab. So that's how to open existing images. Let's leave those open and talk about how to create a new image from scratch. You might do that when you want a blank canvas on which to draw or on which you want to place some images. So this time, from the File menu, Let's choose New. That opens this new document window. Photoshop comes with a lot of blank document presets that you can start with. To find one that works for you, first select a category of documents from the top of the window. Photo, Print, Art and Illustration, or one of these others. I'm going to select Photo. Next, choose one of the preset sizes in this section called Blank Document Presets. If you don't see one you like, there's an option here to view more presets, view all presets. I'm going to select this preset, the landscape orientation 4x6. Over on the right, all the details have now been set up for me, including the width and the height. If you decide that's not exactly the size you want, you can type a different size into the width or height fields. Any of the other settings on the right could be customized too, but sticking with the presets takes the worry out of having to figure out technical details at the beginning. And these settings could be changed later in Photoshop if you need to. So to finish creating a new document, click the Create button. And your new blank document opens in Photoshop, ready for you to add a photo, text, or maybe a shape. All as you'll learn to do as you continue through this tutorial series. Let's take a look at how Photoshop is laid out to help you get comfortable with your workspace. To follow along with this tutorial, you can open any image. The first interface element to get familiar with is the document window, which is right here in the center of the screen. This is where you'll work on your images. Over to the right of the document window are the panels that have a variety of image editing controls. There are more panels than just those you see in this panel column. Some of the panels are hidden behind others. For example, here we have a panel group of the Color panel and the Swatches panel. If I want to see the Swatches panel, I can just click its tab, and that brings it forward so I can use it. I'll go ahead and select a blue swatch here in the Swatches panel, and that color will be applied when I use other color features like the Brush tool. There are some panels that aren't open on the face of Photoshop. To open one of those panels, go up to the Window menu and choose from this list of alphabetical panels a panel that doesn't have a check mark. For example, I'll choose the Histogram panel. That opens the Histogram panel, and after I'm done using it to evaluate the tones in a photograph, for example, I can close it by clicking the double-pointed arrow here. Another important interface element is the Tools panel, which is located to the left of the document window. It's this long vertical bar here. If you're not sure what a tool is, you can just hover over its icon, and in a moment you'll see the name of the tool in a tooltip. To select a tool, just click it. There are more tools than you see on the face of the Tools panel. You can click and hold any tool, like the horizontal type tool here, that has a little triangle at its bottom right corner, and you'll see a flyout menu of related tools. So if I want to add text not in a horizontal orientation, but rather in a vertical orientation, 
I can just slide down to the vertical type tool in this flyout menu and select it from there. Each tool has a number of controls called options, and those are found in the next major interface element, the horizontal options bar up here at the top of the screen. The important thing about the options bar is that it changes depending on what tool is selected. So because I have the vertical type tool selected, I see options for text, like this font size menu here. But keep your eye on the options bar as I select another tool. I'll click on the brush tool, for example. And now the options have changed to offer brush opacity and brush flow and more. Let's go ahead and apply an option. One of the things you'll often want to do when you have a brush tool selected is to change the size of the brush tip. And you can do that using the brush picker option, which is the first option over here on the left of this options bar. I'll click that option to open the brush picker and then I can move the size slider in the brush picker over to the right to increase the size of the brush tip or to the left to decrease it. And then I'll click in a blank area to close the brush picker. I'll move into the image and I'll apply some paint. And by the way, the brush tool is painting with blue because you'll remember that's the color I chose in the swatches panel earlier in this video. By the way, if I change my mind about that paint stroke or whatever I just did in Photoshop, I can undo it by pressing the common keyboard shortcut for undo, which is Command plus Z on a Mac or Control plus Z on a PC. The last major interface element is the menu bar at the very top of the screen. And here you have multiple menus with lots of controls. For example, if I want to close this image, I can select Close from the File menu. And you can go ahead and close the image without saving since we haven't made any permanent changes. So that was a quick look at the major features of the Photoshop interface that you'll use over and over as you work in Photoshop. The document window, the panels, the tools, the tool options, and the menu bar. Zooming and panning are ways to navigate around an image that you'll use often as you work on images in Photoshop. To practice working with the zoom and pan controls, open this image from the tutorial practice files, or open a large image of your own. Zooming means changing the magnification of the image, as you might do if you were looking at the sky through a telescope. You may want to zoom in for a closer view of part of an image, or you may want to zoom out to see more of an image on your screen. The most straightforward way to zoom is to select the zoom tool toward the bottom of the tools panel here. Then go up to the options bar for the zoom tool where you'll find a plus icon for zooming in and a minus icon for zooming out. Let's start with the plus icon activated, which is the default. Then to zoom in, move into the image and click. And each time you click, you'll zoom in a little further. To zoom back out to see more of the image again, go back to the options bar and this time select the minus icon. And then click several times in the image to zoom back out. If you want to zoom in again, you have to go back to the options bar, click the plus icon, and click in the image to zoom in again. Now you may get tired of going up to the options bar every time you want to switch between zooming in and zooming out. So here's a shortcut that will help you. When the zoom in option is active as it is now, you can switch to zooming out by holding the option key on your keyboard if you're on a Mac or the alt key on Windows. Hold down that key and then click in the image. And that will automatically switch you back to zooming out. Then release your finger from the Option or Alt key and you're switched back to zooming in. And so you can click in the image to zoom in again. The Zoom tool has a couple of options in its options bar that you can use to move quickly to zoom levels that you use often. The Fit Screen option here in the Options bar comes in handy when you're zoomed in like this and you want to get back to a view of the entire image. Just click the Fit Screen option and the entire image fits itself into your document window. Another useful option is this 100% option. Clicking this zooms you into 100% view of the image, which is the best way to view an image when you're checking it for sharpness. Now I'm working on a small screen and this image is pretty large. So when I zoom into 100%, I can't see the whole image on my screen. Although you may not experience the same thing if you're working on a large monitor. So if I want to see a different part of this image at this zoom level, I'm going to need to move the image around in my document window. That's called panning and it's done with another tool, the hand tool. So I'm going to go back to the tools panel and I'm going to select the hand tool there which is just above the Zoom tool. 
Then I'll move into the image and notice that my cursor is now changed to a hand icon. I'll click, drag, and move the image in the document window to a place that I want to see, and then I'll release my mouse. When I'm done checking the sharpness here and I want to go back to view the entire image on screen, I'll go up to the options bar for the hand tool, and there I'll see the same fit screen option that we had for the zoom tool. So I can just click fit screen in the hand tool options bar, and that takes me back to see the entire image in my document window. Let me show you another way to zoom. Instead of clicking, you can do continuous zoom by holding your mouse down on the image. I'll go back and get the zoom tool in the tools panel, and then I'm going to click and hold in the image. And the image zooms in continuously. If you zoom in really far like this, you can see the pixels that are the building blocks of an image in Photoshop. By the way, the size of these pixels can affect the image quality of a print, which is why image resolution is an important topic, especially for printing, something we'll talk more about when we cover resizing an image later in this series. I'm going to go up to the options bar and click Fit Screen so I can see the entire image on my screen again. One more thing, let's say that you're working with another tool, maybe the brush tool and you're painting in a small area, and you don't want to switch out of the brush tool over to the zoom tool just to zoom. Well, there's a shortcut that you can use instead of the zoom tool, and that is to hold the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC as you press the plus key on your keyboard. And every time you do that, that will zoom you in. If you want to zoom back out, hold the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC and press the minus key on your keyboard and that will zoom you back out. So that's an introduction to zooming and panning that I hope will help you to navigate your images as you're working on them in Photoshop. To finish up with this lesson, you can close this image without saving. Photoshop gives you 